Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a radical equation. We have the cube root of 2 minus x equals 2 minus x cubed, and we're going to be solving for x values. When you see a radical equation, typically we want to raise both sides to a power uh, to get rid of the radical. In this case, cubing both sides would be appropriate, and if you do that, you're going to get what is called a nonic equation, which is ninth degree. So that equation is going to be pretty hard to solve, in my opinion. I could be wrong, let me know if I got it wrong. But you can try it. It's not going to be um, that hard because we're missing some terms here, right? So hopefully that'll be not too hard. Anyway, so but I'm going to use a different approach. I don't want to go nonic. I just want to go a little different way. So here's what I'm going to do. Instead of cubing both sides, let's go ahead and... Let's go ahead and use substitution because substitution is just awesome. Let's go ahead and set both of these equal to y. And when you set two things equal to y, then you kind of get a system of equations. That's what is nice about it. So first of all, I get cube root of 2 minus x equals y, which implies 2 minus x is y cubed. You can easily cube both sides without the fear of extraneous solutions because it's the um, 3 is an odd number. That's one equation. And then the second equation comes from the second equality, 2 minus x cubed equals y. What I want to do here is I want to switch these two because if they're being subtracted from 2, then their sum is 2, in other words. So I can safely say 2 minus y is equal to x cubed. Now, if this looks hard to you, you can go ahead and add x cubed to both sides and then subtract y from both sides. y cancels out and you end up with the exact same thing, algebraically. Okay, so now we get ourselves a system of equations. Nice. Uh, even though it doesn't look like a smart way to do it, we went from an equation to a system. Guess what? This system is somewhat symmetrical, so it's going to be easier to solve. So introducing extra variables is not necessarily a bad thing. Make sense? So did I tell you I'm going to show you a graph at the end, which kind of verifies our findings too. If I didn't, then I'm telling you right now that I'll show you a graph. I know a lot of you uh, like graphs uh, with Desmos. Sometimes uh, the graphs don't display well or uh, I have to zoom out like crazy and then you're going to end up seeing something that look horizontal or totally vertical. It's not going to make sense. But otherwise, I will share with you the graph as much as possible. Anyways, so here's what I'm going to do. I'll, I'm going to subtract these equations. Especially, I see that uh, I have the same number, 2, 2. Uh, they're going to cancel out. You could also do the following, uh, isolate 2 and set it equal to each other. No matter what you do, you're going to get something like this. 2 minus x minus 2 minus y is equal to y cubed minus x cubed. So I subtracted the equations, first minus second. And then if you expand minus 2 plus y, you're going to see that the 2 cancels out. And we end up with y minus x on the left-hand side and y cubed minus x cubed on the right-hand side. So... A lot of people, maybe not a lot of people, but some people are going to think about the following. They're just going to quickly factor difference of two cubes because they do know uh, that it's factorable. So yes, that's fine. And then immediately they're going to uh, cancel out the y minus x and put something here. Hopefully they're going to put a 1, not a 0, because if you put a 0, then you definitely got it wrong. But this is not a good idea. If you're solving an equation, do not cancel out any factors. Rather, I mean, if you have a number on both sides, you can, but not the variables. Instead of that, go ahead and put everything on the same side, set it equal to zero, and factor. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to subtract y minus x from this expression. So it goes like this, y cubed minus x cubed minus y minus x equals zero. So let's go ahead and factor the difference of two cubes now. It's safer. We didn't cancel out anything. y minus x times y squared plus yx plus x squared. Hopefully you do know this formula. And y minus x can be written as 1 times y minus x because I want to get a common factor. So I just want to write it with a 1 in the front. Make sense? Great. Now, notice that we have y minus x as a common factor. So I can take it out. If I take out y minus x, then I get the following. y squared plus yx plus x squared minus 1 equals 0. Awesome. Now, what am I getting from here? 
So I'm getting two factors and their product is zero. So each factor can be set equal to zero. Hopefully we're going to find something about y and x. But remember, y is something we invented. So we can always back substitute. Make sense? But the obvious, the obvious solution from here is going to be y minus x equals zero. And that implies y equals x. Let's go back to y. And y is, what is y? Okay, great. y is 2 minus x cubed. So let's go ahead and replace y with 2 minus x cubed. And let's put everything on the right hand side, add x cubed and subtract 2. You get x cubed plus x minus 2 equals 0. Uh-oh, we ended up with a cubic equation. So what are we going to do with this? Solve it. One of the things that I always mention in my videos, if you have a polynomial equation and if you check the sum of the coefficients and you get 0, then 1 is a solution. In this case, that's what happens. 1 plus 1 minus 2 is 0. Therefore, x equals 1 is a solution. We only got one of the solutions, but for a cubic, that's a lot of progress. So what we can do next is factor this expression using the fact that x minus 1 is a solution. I mean, x equals 1, I'm sorry. That implies x minus 1 is a factor. So factor theorem gives us that. So now we can go ahead and pull out x minus 1 from here. Let's go ahead and do that. x cubed plus x minus 2. Now what happened to the other factor? We'll get back to it. So set it equal to 0. And now I know x equals 1 is a solution. So can I just split up x cubed minus 1 plus x minus 1? This should be pretty natural, especially knowing that x equals 1 is a solution. This is pretty much, you know, uh, expected. So I can now x minus 1 times x squared plus x plus 1 plus 1 times x minus 1 equals 0. x minus 1 out and x squared plus x plus 1 plus 1, which is 2, equals 0. So from here, x equals 1, we already knew that. What about the other solutions? They are complex, non-real. x equals negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, 1 minus 4 times 2, which equals 8, 1 minus 8 equals negative 7. That gives us square root of 7. I hope, I hope this wasn't too fast. Uh, forgive me if I, it was, but those are going to be the solutions. I'm hoping you can solve the quadratic um, equation easily with a quadratic formula. So those are the solutions. So what am I going to do with them? Those are the, all the solutions, right? Well, we have another factor. Come on. So we're going to deal with this right now. So if you, took, if you take a look at this equation, there's a couple things you can do about it. First of all, uh, do we have real solutions? Okay. So one of the things that you can definitely look at is... Um, but let's go ahead and replace y with 2 minus x cubed and let's see what happens. 2 minus x cubed squared plus 2 minus x cubed x plus x squared minus 1 equals 0. Without further ado, let me go ahead and give you what the equation is going to look like. You're going to get something that looks like this. And unfortunately, there is no hexic formula. It's going to be very hectic, right? If it was, it would be super duper complicated. But trust me, there are no real roots. Can we prove it? Uh, yes, there is ways to prove it, but we're not going to get into that. But one thing to keep in mind is I could probably write this, I'm thinking, uh, as a perfect square plus 3x squared over 4 minus 1. If I can show that this quantity is always going to be greater than 0, I don't know that at the moment, then I should be good to go. But how do you do it? That's another question. Let's go ahead and take a look at the graph real quick and we'll finish up. As you can see, these two weird graphs intersect at a single point. And that's going to be our only real solution, x equals 1, as you can see here. And those graphs kind of look similar, don't they? And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.